So here's a new idea for you. Numbers, when used as measurements, are like the spectrum of colors in the rainbow. When most people think about numbers, they think about them as distinct entities that are detached from one to the next. Yet in most cases, this is actually not true. If you measure something and find it to be, say, 2, it's never going to be exactly 2. It'll be somewhere between the numbers 1 and 3, depending upon how good your measuring tool is and how good you are at using it. So a measurement is like trying to determine if something is exactly orange and where that lies between the colors red and yellow. It's a judgment call. So numbers and colors are sort of blurry. One person's idea of the color red is probably different than another person's. We can begin to clarify our definition of the color red when we associate it with an object like red wagon or perhaps red apple. Now imagine the number two in your mind. You probably are seeing the symbol for the number, something like this. But if I tell you to imagine two people, or two dogs, the number kind of disappears. It's now a quantity of people, or dogs. There's generally little dispute about the number two when we count things like people, or dogs. I mean, no one's probably going to argue with you about whether or not there really are two people, or two dogs. But what if I say two grams? People are less good at doling out grams than they are at counting people or dogs. How about meters? How good would you be at estimating, say, two meters? Because all measurements have at least some amount of uncertainty in them, people have devised a method which allows you to determine just how exact a measurement is simply by how the number is written. For example, if you write two meters, we say this has one significant digit which means it's pretty much a total guess. You are saying that a measurement is maybe between 1 and 3 meters, and you're not very sure about what it is. This could be because you don't know what a meter is, and you don't have one handy, or because you're estimating the height of a person standing a quarter mile away, and it's hard to see. Now what if you write 2.0 meters? This means that you're guessing at the tenths place. You are sure about this measurement by about plus or minus 0.1 meters. It's a better measurement, more exact, and reliable. It is said to have two significant digits. Notice that the added zero changes the number, like if I said deep red as opposed to just red. All right, so at this point, you're probably wondering how on earth this could be important. Well, let me give you an example. Suppose you're a doctor treating a sick patient with a medication prescribed at a rate of 0 0.200 grams every hour. That means that you should give the patient no more or no less than 0.2 grams plus or minus only one milligram every hour. If you're a doctor who doesn't understand significant digits and assumes that those zeros just don't count, you might think that that's the same as 0.2 grams every hour and you might administer, say, 0.3 grams every hour, thinking that it's plus or minus 0.1 grams. Unfortunately for the patient, that's a hundred times the proper dose. Now consider an astronomer who measures the distance to the moon as 384,400 kilometers. Where's the uncertainty in this number? Do the zeros count? Well, the answer is no. As written, the scientist has guessed at the 4 in the hundreds place, so the measurement is only reliable plus or minus 100 kilometers. It has only four significant digits, which doesn't seem very good. So, what if you want those zeros to count? Well then, you'd have to write the number like this, in which case the zeros do count and the number has six significant digits, which might seem better, only now you're misrepresenting the measurement. You see, the moon's orbit is not a perfect circle, which is why the number was recorded as plus or minus 100 kilometers in the first place. So now, let's look at how we do calculations with significant digits. There are basically two rules. First, let's look at the rule for addition and subtraction. Take these two measurements and add them together as normal. Look at the answer. It has more precision than the measurement 31.1, and you can't have that. Basically, you would be lying about your results. 
So the rule says that you must round your answer down to the place value of least certainty, which is in the tenths place. So your final answer needs to be rounded down to 33.3. There's a second rule for multiplication and division. Suppose you're trying to find the area using these two measurements, and the calculator gives you an answer of 10.902. The rule for multiplication and division is more drastic than that for addition and subtraction. You need to round your answer down to the lowest number of significant digits used to get your answer. In this case, two significant digits in the measurement 2.0 centimeters. So your answer needs to be rounded down to 11 centimeters squared. Okay, so that's basically it. But don't be fooled. This can be pretty tricky stuff. So the more you practice it, the better you'll get, or should I say, the less uncertain you'll become.